still leaves that billionaire with almost $10 billion. It's the revenue profit. There are so many things wrong with this. God, why are these guys so stupid? Selling apparel, electronics, and hardware, not to mention a grocery store section and one half of a restaurant selling the worst version of the food you have come to tolerate. That way, customers only need one major store for all their shopping, creating the illusion that our store is their second home. You have been carefully selected among our long list of applicants for the same reason you applied in the first place, mutually limited options. Today, you will learn all sorts of important information so that you can be a trusted employee. I've been working here for 10 years and I'm recording this on my last day with the company. First and foremost, we need to talk about shoplifting. The difference between what the store has in its physical inventory and what our records indicate the store should have in its book inventory is called shrink. Only estimates are possible, but retailers want to inflate the total cost of shrink for a number of reasons. I'll explain. Not everything lost to shrink is because of shoplifters. Products are misplaced, mislabeled, and miscounted all the time. We're only human and mistakes are made. Also, sometimes products are stolen, but are stolen by the employees instead of the customers. Estimates are given, about a third from shoplifting, a third from employee theft, and a third from everything else. Commercial insurance companies are aware of this approximation. That is one of the reasons why commercial insurance generally does not protect retailers from shoplifting. Only instances of significant theft after hours. Commercial insurance companies know that if they did offer shoplifting coverage, retailers would inflate their so-called shoplifting losses by showing them the shrink ledger calculations and making a less than honest guess about how much was shoplifted and how much was entirely the fault of the retailer's own mistakes. Commercial insurance companies know how big business operates and don't allow themselves to be vulnerable to fraud any more than the retail corporation would. Because shoplifting is not covered by commercial insurance, retail corporations play the victim to the public. Here's how. The calculation is called shrink and not shoplifting, but the terms are intentionally used so interchangeably that retail corporations can mitigate negative public relations related to downsizing and layoffs. It's not our fault we're firing employees, they say. Look at these shrink calculations. In truth, the corporation was going to fire the employees anyway. They just need to pass the blame to the customers instead of themselves. Corporations already have an approximation of what they are going to lose to shoplifting every year. What, what, is, what, what, uh, what even is the argument? Do, you don't, you don't even need a reason to lay employees off technically. I mean, like, it's not like you have an obligation to hire people. So he's saying that they were going to lay employees off anyway. So they make up the excuse. What, what, what is like the alternative? That they should never lay people off or that they should say they're laying people off because of business is bad? Or I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't even know where we're going with this, but okay, let's. Because the percentage does not shift dramatically. <clears throat> Thus, corporations are not suddenly caught off guard by shoplifting, forcing their hand to perform unexpected layoffs. If corporations are performing layoffs, the reasons are related to other factors an unexpected dip in sales, redundancies due to mergers, things like that, but not the relatively consistent level of shoplifting from year to year. Furthermore, shoplifting constitutes an insignificant percentage of loss. More on that later. In other words, it's never shoplifting. Pretending that shoplifting is a major concern allows the corporations to further ingratiate themselves to the- Oh, uh, so I'm not gonna go over all this on the stream, because <coughs> you either watched the stream or you didn't, I don't care. Um, a lot of people got really upset and were propagating misinformation that um, shoplifting in San Francisco is not like a real thing. That like basically corporations were, maybe this is in response to that, I don't know how old this video is, but people were saying like, um, for me, people were saying like, oh, like retailers are complaining in San Francisco that shoplifting is like really bad and they've got to close stores. Well, that's fake because we can see the reported numbers are actually like as low as they ever have been. Um, but the, um, but the issue is that they don't report shoplifting because the cops don't do anything about it. So there's no reason to. And then I think the the proof we saw with that was that there was, where was the article? Like one Target installed a button in their store. And I think in one day they like, <clears throat> shoplifting numbers for all of San Francisco, for the entirety of the city of San Francisco doubled in September after one target location changed the method that it uses to report the crime. 
all the shoplifting numbers for the entire city of San Francisco doubled in September when one store added a button to, to report their crime. Um, yeah, the idea that like shoplifting is just not a real thing and corporations just lie about it is just some, it's, that's just bullshit. Public presenting the illusion that corporations are valiant heroes, giving customers great products at low, low prices, and that any problems with the corporation are external, not internal. This allows powerful corporations with significant influence over society a paradoxical victim status that is highly appealing to the public. Corporations want you to believe that they are your friends so that you shop at their stores, listen to their advertisements, ignore how much money they donate to politicians, and forget about their misdeeds. In short, corporations can, and do, inflate the cost of shoplifting and the dangers of shoplifting. But wait, don't big corporations still lose a lot of money to shoplifting? No, not really. Corporations want you to believe that they are under assault for the aforementioned victimization label, but the truth is far more mundane. Remember that relatively consistent level of shoplifting annually? Let's get into some specifics. According to the National Retail Federation, the national average of shrink compared to percentage of sales is 1.4%. That is not very much, but it's still not even all shoplifting. Remember, approximately one third of shrink is shoplifting. And okay, real quick, you um, real quick, you, you have to be careful when we talk about some of these numbers sometimes, okay? Revenue, profit are two very important things to understand, and your percentage of profit based off your revenue is important. Let's say hypothetically, my revenue for a given quarter is 100, okay? Let's say that my, pro let's say that my revenue is 100, and let's say that I lose like two to shoplifting, okay? So if you kind of look at, okay, well 100 revenue, you're losing two units, like it's 2%. Is it really that bad? Well, if we consider that we don't really care about our revenue, we care about our profit, right? If our profit is, we'll say like eight or nine, off against our 100 revenue, we bring in $100 or whatever, um, but we're profiting like eight or nine. Well, now if I'm losing $2 or two units, or whatever, to shopkeeping, well, now I'm losing like 30% of my profits. That's, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. And it wouldn't surprise me if profit margins in retail were even smaller than that. I doubt it's nine or 10% across everything. It's probably even less. Um, Walmart's profit margin is like 2.6%. Yeah, so the idea that like, oh, you're just losing one and a half percent to like shoplifting, that's a very stupid um, misunderstanding of how accounting works for. And one third of 1.4% is zero. Also, another really big issue, and maybe he'll bring this up here. National figures might not be the, the number that we're using here. I don't know if a CVS is gonna close in San Francisco because of the national shoplifting rate. It's probably gonna vary pretty heavily from area to area. That would be my guess. So when you're quoting the national shoplifting figure and then trying to say, why is somebody here closing a store? I mean, I don't know if that's like the, the most honest way of doing that comparison. Do, cave, do deep caves have, fuck, we should just explore caves. Strip mining sucks now. I don't think I have, I don't think I found a single diamond. <laughs> 0.4666, let's just say 0.47%. So that's less than half of 1%. Corporations make that number seem larger by combining the shoplifting losses of every single business in the nation and showing the public a total that looks dramatic and massive. But this number is spread out across over 1 million retail establishments. A billionaire losing 0.47% of, say, $10 billion still leaves that billionaire with almost $10 billion. It's the revenue profit. There are so many things wrong with this. God, why are these guys so fucking stupid? There are so many things wrong with like you going by a percentage of revenue instead of by a percentage of profit, um, using national figures versus local figures. Like, it's such a, uh, I can't. In fact, if those figures were inverted and the billionaire only kept 
0.47% instead of lost 0.47%, meaning they were to lose 99.53%, that individual would still be tremendously wealthy and could live on that fraction of 1% for the rest of their life. That's how much billionaires have, and that's how little a fraction of 1% is. Shoplifters are not genuinely damaging the lives of the owners of billion dollar corporations. Security guards for department stores are paid low wages. Nevertheless, security is often limited in department stores or automated. Many times there's not even a single security guard on duty. Why is that? Because even a low wage security guard can sometimes cost more annually than losses due to shoplifting. That's okay. I had a few people email me this. Um, I, I'm pretty sure in most places that's you're not even allowed to engage a person that is like shoplifting. <clears throat> I think I had a guy from Best Buy and a guy from Target email me, I think. Somebody send me another email if I'm wrong on that. But um, you do, like if people are shoplifting, you can't do anything about it. Because like, it, like the, sometimes people will see your store if you fuck up, your employees can get hurt. Um, it's just not worth it. Like those are store rules, not laws though. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like you're just, it, it's not because like, oh, it's like there's so little money lost. It's more just like the liability of trying to fight <clears throat> the liability of trying to fight off somebody stealing shit from you is not is just not usually worth it. But I mean, like that's probably true of real life people stealing your shit. But that doesn't mean you want your stuff to get stolen, stolen, or that it's like inconsequential, you know. Retail corporations hire some security guards as a deterrent, but generally instruct the guards to perform their duties in a limited capacity instead of chasing them throughout the store and into the parking lot. Most security guards are also unarmed. If shoplifting were a serious threat- Wait, does this guy have a Twitter? <laughs> Fuck, these guys have all heard of me, so I can never- Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just- I don't know what I expected. <clears throat> I looked him up on Twitter, I'm already blocked. Nice echo chamber, dipshit. <clears throat> Corporations would hire more security guards, but since it's not a serious threat, it would not be cost effective to pay more guards. To summarize, shoplifting is a nuisance at best, but it is a nuisance that allows a corporation to play the victim card. Hold on. I've seen videos of people shoplifting and breaking windows. There's a crime wave. Sensationalized news footage would have you believe that the nation is out of control. But these are anecdotal accounts and individual incidents. Watching a video of someone shoplifting and getting away with it does not mean our national moral character is collapsing. Okay, I don't think the issue was were those videos. I thought the big issue was the... Um, I thought the big... I thought that these were relatively unprecedented what are they called fuck we saw a few where there were like there'd be like 30 cars like pulling up Overnight, another break-in. This one at LA's high-end shopping center, The Grove. Leaving store windows smashed, the suspect still at large after from the heart of San Francisco merchandise and fleeing. In Walnut Creek, highly organized shoplifting crews breaking into high-end retailers, grabbing merchandise and fleeing. A cluster of getaway cars blocking traffic to Light. aid their getaways. The sprees taking place in a matter of minutes. I saw people running down the street. I probably saw 50 to 80 people. Why do these people relentlessly defend theft? It's it becomes like um Oh fuck. <coughs> Hold on. No, I don't care that much actually. Um Hello? Oh, people just like moralize everything. And and it, it that's that, uh, yeah, I'm too lazy to even explain. It's just depressing. Like, it, it, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Because, <coughs> like, businesses are, like, owned by capitalists, and those guys are evil. There's this, like, kind of, like, this misattribution that people that are shoplifting are doing it just because they're poor and they need to steal baby formula to survive. Um, a lot of people don't like any tough-on-crime rhetoric at all. They're like, oh, no, tough-on-crime is always racist. Um, it sucks, but there is probably 
a tinge of truth to that O'Reilly rant earlier that sometimes people don't like to talk about crime um, that affects minority communities if it's committed by minority communities because you seem racist. Uh, something that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Uh, I don't bring this example up anymore because I've now I've done more reading and I realized it was wrong. People will look at like crack cocaine versus powder cocaine and they always give that as an example. Like, why are the charges so harsh on crack cocaine instead of powder cocaine? It's because black people do crack cocaine and white people do powder cocaine. No, bullshit. It's because crack cocaine was destroying every fucking major black neighborhood in the entire fucking United States. And even black people wanted people selling and doing crack cocaine to get their asses thrown in jail. It was like, it was, it was insane. The murder rate, crime in the 90s in the United States was fucking out of control, higher than it ever has been in the history of the country, still higher than it ever has been or ever was in the history of the country. There's a reason why people went so hard after crack cocaine. And it's not because only black people did crack and only white people did powder. Um, but yeah, there's the, the, the crime is just really hard to talk about because like racist labels and shit get thrown around very quickly and people get like really upset about it all. Um. People and like ski masks, crowbars, like a bunch of weapons. This is it's insane though. Or maybe this always has happened. We just have never had videos of it before. But like this, like organized retail stuff is like the eighty people in like ski masks, crowbars. Eighty like, people. Like look at this shit, dude. This is wild. <laughs> weapons. In San Francisco, eyewitness video capturing masked thieves with armfuls of stolen goods. Police racing to the scene, bashing in a suspect's car window to make an arrest. In all, nine stores were hit. Police say eight people have been arrested, with several weapons and thousands of dollars in merchandise recovered. We're not going to allow people to come in and continue to do this in our city. More officers are being assigned to Union Square, San Francisco's holiday shopping and tourism no, center. To the mayor vowing to limit. I'm about to start. Oh, it yeah. it. Smash and grab robberies are hitting other problem. cities as well, including Beverly Hills in suburban Chicago, where this Louis Vuitton store was hit in broad daylight. The cost of organized retail crime estimated by one trade organization at more than $68 billion worth of products. Multi-agency task forces now set up in Illinois and California. These are crimes of opportunity, but they're very well organized. And they need crimes that were to stop this sort of like crime. this is wild. Until there's a response until there's a political will and you can't be making like these fucking oh, i'm trying not to use bad words you can't make youtube videos like this okay living in some like upper class suburb where you're isolated by all of these problems and then just like scream at everybody else that the problems aren't real and it's because of socialism and capitalism and evil billionaires because you're this is what i'm talking about where i'm saying you're missing you're fundamentally disconnected from the experience of other people and then when you go into an area and you're trying to have these debates or arguments and you're coming out with like oh well shoplifting isn't even a big problem like here's my blah 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 bullshit numbers like okay well now now no one's listening to what you're gonna have to say because the people that are living in these areas right and you can even walk down some of these areas. I think in Beverly Hills, some correct me wrong, like there's a lot of these places that will just like stay boarded up for weeks or sometimes months. Um, it takes, it's really depressing to walk down some streets. Um, fuck, where was I in? Was it, <coughs> I don't remember if it was in New York or if it was in London. Um, I remember walking down one of these streets once though and like there were, um, I had never seen, I guess, cause I'm a privileged white dude. I didn't know what it meant when like all of the stores had like boards behind the windows. I was like, I don't even know, like, is it like a new design thing or whatever? And then I, I don't remember if I had a friend in the area. I was like, why is like everything like boarded up? I was like, oh, there was like huge like break-ins or whatever. And they just haven't fixed anything yet. I was like, oh, that's ultra fucking depressing. Holy shit. Uh, I don't know how long it takes for these things to be like fixed or like how long these shopping centers remain fucked or whatever, but it's like, Jesus. Um, it might've been in London. I don't remember, but legislative efforts to support London. police efforts to stop this sort of activity. We're going to see it proliferate and continue. Authorities say the ringleaders are often not present during these organized sprees, making prosecutions even more difficult. And I think this is more footage of that one. New video today the taken Louis Vuitton Wednesday one. about 3.30 in the afternoon. Look at the entrance to the Louis Vuitton True. store at Oak Brook Center. A crew of criminals, 14 suspects, according to police, <laughs> working together in the store and driving away in three vehicles. Once they entered the store, uh, they pulled out their, the garbage bags from, the, from their uh, coats and, and started uh, filling, uh, filling them with merchandise. 
Oak Brook's police chief says they are following leads today, including license plate numbers for- Like, I'm almost half expecting like these lefty bread tuber dipshits to go drive through like shitty areas of Chicago. Be like, now these poor owners of these stores, you can tell they care. Now, if Louis Vuitton cared about their windows, why don't they have any reinforced bars behind them like they do in areas of LA or Chicago or Baltimore? Why don't they, these guys care about the windows? Just, like, <laughs> they would just praise this. They would just praise like stealing from like- Well, yeah, coverage. because Hassan would say these guys are going back to the hood to give it to poor and impoverished children or, or whatever. Or like sell it, it for stuff. Yeah, or sell it for necessities to survive. But the criminals get away cars. We do have some information on the vehicles. Uh, we're, we're holding back that information right now, but uh, but certainly we're working those leads in order to identify the... Wait, the does anybody have the... <laughs> I want the video of his son. San Francisco where five Walgreens stores... I want the video of his son saying, you don't see when they go back and redistribute it. <laughs> Please, I need that one. <laughs> Around the city will be. He actually said it. I, I want to see it. I want to see it. Somebody find me. Soon closing their doors for good. Brazen robberies like this one have become an epidemic. And tonight, KPIX 5's Betty Yu asked some city leaders what's being done to help. This Hayes Valley Walgreens, located on Goss Street. <laughs> Thoughts on stealing of the shampoo from Walgreens? Yeah, I, I saw this. This is so fucking stupid, dude. Like my favorite streamer? Like, what, are we just let people moon moon? steal uh. shit, dude. What the fuck is wrong with you? They're not hurting anybody. Like, that's unironically my take. Like, what is this? This is like actually dry snitching, dude. I think I've already, I've rambled on this. So I'm not going to do a, a whole other one again, but I, just, I would like, I'll just reinforce. Living in poor areas and going to the store where like, your razor blades are behind locked cabinets and everything is really, really, really depressing. Like there, I, I wish I could remember we're in LA, but there are some places where like, you'll be at one gas station or in one store where everything is fine and you can walk like 10 minutes to like another city. And all of a sudden oh, yeah, like- you're in the good, you're in the good- Yeah, place. the gas station people, they don't let you in. They only talk to you through the fucking window. They don't let anybody in the gas station or you'll, or you'll see like so many things behind locked cabinets that you would never guess. Like any cosmetic product or any, or any uh, like, uh, not beauty, health, hair hygiene. Products. Yeah, and yeah, hair products even. Anything that costs more than like ten bucks, you have to ask somebody from the front to come and unlock for you. And it's like, oh my god, um, these places are depressing as fuck. I don't know if these guys have never been there before or like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, are and they that only happens for because the uh, what's it called, shrinkage or um? Well, it's because because like people is, are like, stealing heavy. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Itching, dude. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, are they stealing from you? No, they're stealing from Walgreens. Like, what are you, Mr. Wall or Mr. Green? Like, why are you fucking doing that? No, wait, this isn't the right clip. Somebody give me the other one. This isn't the right one. This guy gets stuck in the door. Oh, I think I've seen this one before. <laughs> oh, is it the jewelry store one? He has a gun, but they just end up, they leave and they lock him in. <laughs> he tries to shoot out the lock. do shit okay there's good stuff happening on the protest side always like you only see the looting of target you don't see the redistribution of the goods that they took from target back to the community um like because a lot of these neighborhoods are now turning into fucking food deserts where you have to drive 30 minutes to an hour to go get food that's not even what a if food desert means you stupid fuck in those neighborhoods it's where do you live in the United States in any in any city where you have to drive 30 minutes to find food? Have you been in any cities in the United States in your entire life? Like it's like such a clueless statement. He's the bodega bro. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, maybe he actually envisions like an actual desert. <laughs> what? You think that's funny? 
It was, yeah. <laughs> okay, you well. should probably explain what a food desert is for... I guarantee you there's a good portion of your chat that <clears throat> doesn't fucking know what it is. Sure, people think that food deserts mean there's no food available anywhere. What a food desert generally means is you have to go pretty far to find a store that has like high quality like fruits and vegetables. That's what a food desert means. It doesn't mean there's no food or no grocery stores at all. But um, the problem is even the concept of food deserts are stupid. The issue is that people think that, and it's irritating too, and I understand why, because a lot of people that cry about poor people have never been poor, they don't understand. People think that if you just gave poor people grocery stores with tons of fruits and healthy foods and vegetables, they would make better decisions when it comes to diet, but that's not true. Like diet is something that's heavily ingrained in you from like birth, like, like in terms of what your parents yeah. and everything do. Um, and the, like, you're not just gonna make good choices and have time to cook like full meals and do all this shit just because you put like a huge grocery store, you know, with fresh produce, you know, next to a poor person's house. That's just not how that works. Potentially <clears throat> identify. Oh, uh, okay. Let's finish this one off. Are you ready to play Apex Legends mode? <laughs> uh. Maybe I'll download it. Yeah, you do that. It means that the media has found a narrative playing, that scares white suburb. Sure. What do you want to? What do you want to play, Moot? We need games. Play Mike? Oh, I want to play. I want to play Raft with you. Raft? Is it actually yeah. a good game? You said it was easy. It's it's a fun game. Yeah. Yeah. I actually want to see you play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That's what I want. Why? To see. It's just a hack and slash. <laughs> it's the memes, dude. You don't get it. <coughs> Okay, let me a demographic like most easily fooled into being afraid of something that does not affect them. Both local news doesn't affect them. Hmm. Ironic, my friend. And cable news networks know that crime is a good source of ratings. It is true that shoplifting has increased in the past two years, but that is not because of some newfound disrespect of our time-honored, glorious, benevolent corporations. Nor is it a sign of the collapse of morality. <laughs> The economic downturn due to the unexpected events of the past two years has led to an increase in need and a decrease in the funds to meet these needs. Furthermore, homelessness has been on the rise since about 2016 due to the stagnation of wages, the housing market, and other factors. Now take that increase in homelessness and combine it with the economic downturn. I don't think that economic downturn is why people are doing organized retail theft. Like... But, okay. And the recent end of eviction protections and homelessness has risen even more dramatically. People with nothing need something. It's such a... This is another thing that's very irritating. And again, I understand because a lot of the people that talk about poverty have no experience with poverty at all, okay? Poor people in the United States of America do not starve. We don't starve to death in this country. For all the horror stories and horrible things you hear about the United States, it is just not the case that poor people are like starving, okay? We, like poor people, not like not to sound insensitive, but, like poor people are some of the most obese people in the country, okay? We, we don't have problems with like caloric intake. Um, that's just not something that this country deals with. The idea that people are starving and need to steal food to survive is just ridiculous. The rise in shoplifting is not some moral collapse. It is a consequence of economics. Also, even if shoplifting were to rise to the point of being double what it normally is, that still wouldn't even account for 1% of losses. The billionaire class is doing just fine. More importantly, it's not even worth scaring white suburbanites anyway because shoplifting is a surreptitious crime. A crime that is done- You are the, the but here's the issue. Bro, you're the white suburbanite. And I don't know if the shoplifting stuff impacts white suburbanites as much, my dude. It probably impacts the inner city shit way more. Now, that's just from my limited experience, but I don't remember going into like super targets in Omaha, Nebraska, and seeing like the crazy bars and shit all over the windows and all the stores shut down. That's some shit that I only see like in like inner city stuff or, or, or like the, in the more like not suburban area, not like downtown areas, but like, would you just call it inner city? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't see like, it's, I don't think it's happening in like these white suburban communities where these stores are all getting shut down and barricaded up. Like, <clears throat> what is a super target? Um, wait, do you not have those across the country? Super target is a normal target. Plus they will sell like all, they have like a full grocery aisle as well. 
Or they used to call them super targets. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't call them that anymore. Secretly and without an individual victim, a shoplifter is almost never a threat to a customer and rare instances when this is not the case only confirm exceptions and do not prove a pattern. Armed robbery is not shoplifting and conflating the two would be a mistake. The aforementioned National Retail Federation even admits that more organized theft accounts for a staggeringly low 0.07% of total lost sales. But nationally, that number, it doesn't matter. It's like saying, why haven't we legalized XYZ? Look at the national polling data on it. The national data doesn't matter. You've got to look at individual areas that are affected, my dude. A fraction of a fraction of a percent. Another way the media presents a more dangerous picture of shoplifting is through falsehoods, such as the debunked theory that shoplifting is legal in California so long as someone shoplifts less than $950 worth of merchandise. This is not true. Prop 47 simply classified theft under $950 as shoplifting and is still punishable for up to six months in prison and a $1,000 fine. Shoplifting. So I don't think the issue is that they quote unquote legalize theft. Somebody can please find me these, maybe let's check, okay. Um. Do you think he's being genuine in his attempt at a criticism or do you think he's just trying to fit a narrative? Um, hold on, ask me that in one second. What, wasn't it the San Francisco, was it the San Francisco DA that said they were gonna stop prosecuting lower crimes? I didn't, I think he just got kicked out. They just, didn't he just lose his election or something because of this? Am I making this up? Um. Yeah, I think he did. Chesa, Chisa Bodine, I don't know how to pronounce it. He was recalled, yeah, he got recalled over this. But I think that, um, I think the, they had a special election to remove him. The issue that people were having was this guy was literally saying, I think, that they were gonna go, they weren't gonna waste as much like resources on shoplifting. That they were like, oh, we're not gonna like, prop, we're, not, we're not gonna like prosecute or go hard on people that are shoplifting or whatever. Um, and then eventually he got, eventually he got recalled because the shoplifting shit, the crime shit in San Francisco is getting so extreme that people are like, fuck this guy. Um, keep in mind that there's a lot of discretion when it comes to how you enforce laws. So you don't have to make shoplifting legal. All you really have to do is just kind of not enforce it as much, which is I think what the problem was that people were getting upset about. The DA blames the police for not bringing cases to him. The police blame the DA for not prosecuting, sure has not been made like legal GTRP. under Prop 47, uh -oh. nor is it responsible for the rise in shoplifting in the past two years. Prop 47 was enacted in 2014, eight years ago. The rise in shoplifting is due to the material conditions of the past two years, and the rise- Anytime somebody says material conditions, it's almost always guaranteed that there's some dipshit commie or socialist. I'm sorry, that's a mean stereotype, but. This is a national trend, not one localized to California. It is therefore largely unrelated. Frankly, six months in prison for shoplifting is still disproportional, but I will get to that later. Now it is true that not all shoplifting happens under the eye of big business and can happen to small businesses, but the vast majority of shoplifting is not happening at a bodega because at a bodega, the owner is always looking at you. It's just- <laughs> The reason why most shoplifting probably happens at big businesses is because big businesses account for most of the merchandise. What are you talking about? Also, at a bodega, the guys aren't always looking at you. Have you, have you ever been, has this guy ever been to a city his entire life? Like there are plenty of like aisles that you can hide in. You could just run and grab some shit and run away. You know the guys are gonna come fucking chase you. He's gonna leave his store all alone, like or, or completely unattended. What a stupid fucking comment. And they're usually like behind counters or behind glass or whatever. Anyway, what? just more practical to go to a department store or a grocery store. Inventing a more sympathetic victim does not change the equation of billionaires losing the tiniest fraction of their billions. 
Finally, it may be true that not all shoplifters are stealing food and other essentials, but often is the case that what is Obama. taken is sold for food and other essentials. Bullshit, dude. This is such a cringe take. Like, oh yeah, bro, like yesterday, me and my friends all broke into the Louis Vuitton store. We stole like $20,000 worth of shit so that we could sell it for fucking double cheeseburgers at McDonald's. Do you know how many, oh yeah, like I got this sick Gucci bag. Do you know how many $5, like, what are they called, buck boxes? What do they call it? Taco Bell, those five dollar. What? Didn't they didn't have like the five dollar buck box or the five dollar. What am I losing thinking? it, old man? No, there was a name for these. I remember. I remember they had these. But like you, you like you pretend you're selling this shit for fucking for food. <laughs> Come on, dude. Oh, is it just called the five dollar box? I don't remember. A few movies that could be sold for <clears throat> say fifty dollars worth of food is simply easier to shoplift than fifty dollars worth of food and other. <laughs> I'm getting, dude, come on, how do you not? The, okay, I was talking to somebody about this a few nights ago. I hate, <laughs> something you're gonna see when I do my manifesto read on Friday is Opium. if I'm doing, if I'm trying to prove something, I feel like I have a big hurdle to overcome. Like I need to show this and this and this and this and this and I need to link this and this and this and this and this and I need to do this and this. Like I feel like I do that. And sometimes I watch these other people and they just lie with impunity. They just lie. They'll just lie and lie and lie and lie and they make shit up. They don't give a fuck. Steve. Yeah, they don't. They clearly they do don't not. give any fucks at all. They just completely lie and they don't care at all. They're essentials. A few movies worth $50 occupies less space than a loaf of white bread worth- Who are you selling a few movies to in 2021, dog? Like, yo, bro, I just jacked fucking Mission Impossible 6. You want to buy this DVD for me for 20 bucks? Do people- do Okay, now I will admit, I am privileged and white. Maybe people still do that? Do, do people buy bootleg DVDs for 50, for 20 bucks, for 30 bucks? Maybe they do somewhere? I don't know. Blu-rays now. Less than $3. Yeah. What did you think? Shoplifters are just desperately in need of three identical copies of Stop or My Mom Will Shoot? No, they're probably selling it for cash money, dog. <laughs> Not to buy fucking food, you dipshit. What do I do if I see a shoplifter? From time to time, as an employee of this department store, you might notice someone carefully looking around, waiting for other customers and employees to look in another direction, and slipping something into their coat, purse, handbag, or pocket. If you see this happen, the first thing you need to do is mind your own f***ing business. Maybe you haven't heard of the golden rule. No snitching. You're not paid to be a security guard, and you're not getting a raise for catching shoplifters like you're some Wild West bounty hunter. The corporation does not care about you. More importantly, you are not defending your community by snitching on a shoplifter because your community does not own the department store. The store is owned primarily by a wealthy family that you will never meet and partially by stockholders who will never in their wildest dreams even contemplate caring about your life, no matter how many boots you lick. Even if someone in your community did own the department store, it is still a privately owned business that does not share its wealth with the community in any meaningful way. That's just not how it works. Now, the department store might employ people in your community, but since losses from shoplifting will never be the actual reason that employees are laid off, catching shoplifters is not defending your community or your fellow coworkers. A corporation does not hire someone to help them. A corporation hires someone to exploit, exploit them. Exploit them, I knew you were gonna say so it. can produce remarkably more value for the corporation than they are paid by the corporation. Uh. That's capitalism, baby. And nobody needs to feel grateful for being a- Fuck. Often is the case, a does not hire some in department stores and grocery stores except people video? who- so they can produce remarkably more value for the corporation than they are paid by the corporation. That's capitalism, baby. And nobody needs to feel grateful for being exploited. Defending capitalism is not the same as defending your community. Nobody benefits from catching shoplifters in department stores and grocery stores except people who are already rich. And it doesn't even benefit them that much due to the microscopic percent- Thank God, at least this guy's channel is like dead as fuck. 300,000 views over the last 30 days. Jesus, how fucking horrible. I'm so happy that BreadTube fucking died. What a dog shit subreddit. 
two comments. Leo with another banger, guys. This sub is so dead. Zero comment, zero, one, three, zero, zero, zero. Ah. What happened? Was it like a massive lifting. sub before and then... This is a bunch of fucking losers, I don't know. They just all suck. They all ate themselves alive, like, purity testing each other. And it doesn't even benefit them that much due to the microscopic percentage of shoplifting losses. It only hurts the poor. That's it. We will always have more- He's in the FD signifier guy on YouTube? Um... Yeah, I think I have. Oh. <laughs> you can tell this guy's stupid just by looking at him. Because he's a socialist, and they're all dumb. Uh, why are you in common with looks? <clears throat> what? Look at you. You're balding. Huh. At least I'm not molding. Only hurts the poor. That's it. We will Didn't always have Simon more says. in common with a shoplifter than we will ever have in common with a billionaire. Solidarity is with the people, and a corporation Obama. is not a person. A corporation. The left being permissive of stealing from the rich is like the right being okay with cheating your taxes. Didn't say Simon True. says. Is a or series sure. of transactions masquerading as a personality through mascots and given a false tangibility through brick and mortar stores. Stop snitching to your boss. Fine, I won't tell my boss. But shouldn't I call the police? That is worse. Absolutely do not call the police. First of all, even if you don't agree with anything else said here about shoplifters, about poverty, about capitalism, any of that, calling the police to respond to a nonviolent crime in a crowded department store, grocery store, or shopping mall will endanger not only the shoplifter, but your customers as well. The police are armed, and your shoplifter is almost certainly not armed. And even if he were, he's not planning on drawing his weapon on his way out of the store. That would not suit his purpose. Losing a pair of shoes is not worth getting someone hurt, or worse. Even if there is no resistance from the shoplifter, the police may still use force anyway, resulting in the deaths of innocent bystanders. <laughs> police- How often do you think this happens? The police are just like, fucking shooting and murdering everybody. Do not de-escalate the situation. They escalate the situation. Because they're trained to prioritize their own safety first, before the safety of others. And this gives these wannabe cowboys an unearned sense of entitlement. Do you want some cowboy SWAT team descending on your store to recover some lost cans of soup? No? Then do not call the police. Customers first. It's customers first. Customers first. More than 5,000 innocent bystanders have been killed during a police pursuit since 1979. That ain't that bad. Is it? I don't know. Oh, that's over 43 years. It's about 120 people a year. I wonder how, I wonder what he's including for that number. Whenever somebody just puts like, Source, USDOJ. I wonder what he's accounting in here. Yeah, killed during police pursuit. So this means probably not even just killed by the police, right? But, I don't know. In one city, 48% of victims injured in police pursuits were innocent by... What is this data point? This reads like some alt-right, like, race realism shit. <laughs> like, in one city, 48% of victims injured by... What is... Second, a prison sentence is a disproportional penalty for shoplifting, and we do not have to actively assist in this disproportional punishment. We are under no obligation as a society to call the police if we know that the outcome is going to be inhumane. We have not been deputized when we step into a shopping mall. The excuse of, well, they should have thought of that before shoplifting, does not take into account that the poor the and the homeless conditions. may not have a choice. 
we should probably be more compassionate as a society. Well, you wouldn't like it if someone stole something from you. Yeah, but that is not actually relevant here. Here is like, okay, here is a question. Lauren told me this. So I don't know if this is real. Where are my Middle Eastern bros at? This Nazi alert. Yeah, Nazi alert. This seems cute if it's true, but I don't know if this is true. Lauren has told me that in some of the like very big um, like Islamic like the more religious Islamic areas that she's been to, she says that what she's told is that there are areas where they have like this kind of moral obligation or sense of duty to people such that if you're poor or homeless in some of these areas and you go up to a store or a restaurant, you're just like, hey, can I have food? That these people have like a religious obligation to do it. That there are people that do it in these areas. Does anybody know if that's actually true? Seems true. <clears throat> that's one of the tenets of Islam. It's absolutely true. A couple of people are saying yes. Even in parts of the UK. Is she thinking of Sikhs? No, she said like in, in some of like the more like fundy Islamic areas that like there are like stores that are ran by these like hardcore Muslims. You can go and say like, hey, I'm hungry or whatever. And like they'll, they'll feed you that. It's just like a thing that they'll do. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but alms is a pillar of Islam. <clears throat> okay, interesting. Isn't that the same with a lot of Christian churches and shit? <laughs> Is it? Do, I would say so. Do they? You go to a Christian church, I think they'll handle it. Will they give you food? Maybe. Yeah, usually. Okay. I guess My it depends, desire... I guess. From you. <laughs> they might not, but... Yeah, but so that, that is not actually right. relevant here. <laughs> My desire to not lose a hypothetical 0.47% of my annual income does not make me sympathize with corporations, especially not enough to want armed police officers storming the department store and tackling poor people struggling to survive. We should not feel okay about people serving in the misery of a prison sentence for the crime of basically nothing. The moral haranguing about this would feel a lot more sincere if corporations were not themselves stealing from people. Every year, corporations steal more from their employees than we will ever steal from them. That is not a statement about the surplus value of labor either. It's just wage theft. Corporations steal approximately $60 billion a year through wage theft in the United States alone. This is done through illegal deductions, refusal to pay minimum wage, and a variety of other ways that businesses screw their workers. And they have the audacity to say, you wouldn't like it if someone stole from you? You're stealing from us. What if the shoplifter doesn't need the goods? Sure, some shoplifters are more like thrill seekers, but how are you gonna determine that? What are you gonna do? Means test the thrill seekers? <laughs> <laughs> seekers. But how are you gonna determine that? What are you gonna do? Means test the shoplifter? Stop them at the door and ask them for their most recent tax return so you can determine their net income? And then if they didn't bring the appropriate- I'm curious who is getting away with refusing to pay minimum wage. Um, it's gonna be two different types of people probably. One, it's gonna be people that hire illegal immigrants. And then two, it's gonna be people that pay Based. cash. Based documents decide these are the circumstances in which you should take the side of capital, mind your own business, and stop snitching. The terms in which the poor are allowed to survive cannot be set and enforced by the economic system that keeps them poor in the first place. What if my boss sees me ignoring shoplifters and I get in trouble? If someone else noticed the shoplifter, they wouldn't have been relying on you in the first place. You'll be fine. Again, you are not says. hired to be a security guard. You have been hired to stock shelves, work the cash register, or greet people at the door to give them- Wage theft is most often the boss makes you clock off and then continue to work. Okay, I'm not saying this doesn't happen. I'm being honest. I don't, I don't know if that, I'm sure that might happen somewhere. Um, but I do know that where I worked, that never happened. 
Um, you would never have somebody clock off and continue working in a kitchen because if they get hurt or it's injured, you're, you're so yeah. unbelievably fucked in so many <laughs> different ways that your life is over. Like they get you're mad losing if your you job, don't clock in. Yeah, you're losing your job, and your manager's losing their job, and everybody's gonna come down and fucking destroy you. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there were some other types of lines of work, maybe, where maybe somebody's like, "You need to take care of that. I don't want any overtime on my clock." I'm sure that happens in some areas, but the liability, at least for big businesses that I've worked at, the liability for you working off the clock would be unbelievable if you got if you got hurt it would be fucked but I, I bet it does happen and maybe in like grocery stores and shit where somebody's like you need to get that work done if you want to keep your job and you better not clock in a single minute of overtime <clears throat> then the illusion that they are welcome and that they have come to their second home congratulations on your new position at Berkman's as for me I am out of here cringe a lot of jobs don't even have a clock, just scheduled shift. Is that true? I think every job I worked Not at had. Not my experience. Yeah, you were either clocking in at the cash register or when I did work oh, study at something. school, <laughs> we had the actual, um, you had a card and you put it in the machine and then you push the button and it, it like stamped it. <laughs> the base thing was like telling a friend, was like, bro, I'm gonna take off 30 minutes early. Can you clock me out? Clock me out. Oh, shit. <clears throat> That's the true wage theft right there. Listen, okay? If you're not trying to steal from your employer, you're not trying, all right? Because if they can fuck you over, they're gonna fuck you over. <laughs> so. You wanna tell them about the. What would you take? You take a quarter? Quarter what? Out of the till? What? At McDonald's, you used to steal. You used to oh, okay, steal. hold on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he used to be a thief. Wait, I wasn't stealing from my wonderful boss, though. I was <laughs> stealing from customers, okay? <laughs> it was a small better. amount. They didn't know. Okay. This is the scam I ran at McDonald's because I'd always be in back drive, okay? That godforsaken fucking drive through window, okay? So, what I would do is anytime somebody came through and paid cash, if they were to ask, if they were to, if they needed change for anything, I would always short the customer like 10 cents, maybe 25 cents if I was feeling ambitious. Um, I'd always short them, you know, some silver piece of change and I'd keep track of it. And then by the end of the shift, I could usually like take like five bucks on my register because <laughs> I'd accumulated a lot of money and stolen customer change. So fucking dumb. <laughs> the one thing that I learned was, here's something, young people you could always steal change from, geriatric motherfuckers would always count. They always yep. count If there is some old fuck do. who came to my window, I would never steal a quarter never from them. Because money. they would sit there and autistically count back every single fucking piece of change to the penny that they got. But um, young people, middle-aged people, you could always steal a quarter and they'd never notice. You'd probably take a fucking dollar in there. Well, damn, that would be... <laughs> now that's super unethical. Legal tender? The actual paper money moot. You just want you just took the coins. Yeah, just the coins. They weren't gonna use the coins anyways. They were probably true. Gonna, they were probably gonna throw on their cup holder and oh, yeah. My buddy got arrested for that exact same thing. How would he get arrested? How would they prove it? So you fucked up. Yeah, that's what I would do. Unless they saw you taking the five at the from the register at the end of your shift or something. 